Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, and welcome to episode 2 of my Let's Play of Mirror's Edge, one of my top 5 games of all time, I think. So, let's jump right in. The contrast between these cutscenes and the ones in uh, first person in-game is quite interesting. Connors. Going to see Pope. Robert Pope. Taking a statement on that break-in last week? Yeah, anyways, it's uh, 56 West Arlen Drive. Tell Lieutenant Miller. Copy that. I'll relay the message, Officer Connors. Thanks. Connors out. Hello, sis. You there, kiddo? Hey, Mark. I bet you're listening to the chatter. You know me. I'll try and get some sleep. It's been a rough day. I'm gonna put the word out tomorrow. See why those blues got itchy trigger fingers. I'll drop by later, okay? And don't chuck that pizza. I like the topping for sure. Matured. Yeah, I know. See you, Mark. Shots fired. Repeat, shots fired. All units proceed to 56 West Arlen Drive immediately. Proceed with caution. Kate! Where are you? Kate, where are you? Mark. You off? Just get on comms and track me. Almost there. Well, anytime you'd like to tell me where there is and what the hell you're doing, feel free. It's my sister. Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna see if I can figure out what's going on. Give me a sec. So here we are, first thing in the morning. This is, um... This is the first proper chapter of the game, and it's actually one of my favourites. Uh, I often replay just this level by itself for fun. Um, it's got a lot to recommend it, because it's one of the pure experiences of the game. Less, uh... Less of the missteps that are made in some of the later chapters, but there's also just... Okay, Drake says there's been some heat on West Island, Pope's place. I guess that's where you're headed, but be careful. I'll tell him what's going on there. There's a really clear sense of flow through a lot of these spaces, which, again, <laughs> one of the mistakes laid in, made in later levels is perhaps that some of them flow less well than the earlier ones. You know he was running for mayor, right? Finally, someone who could actually make a difference in this place. So, yeah. This is the this is the architectural offices of Robert Pope and Associates. Um, Robert Pope is an architect. This is his firm. It is thematically relevant that Pope is an architect, which I think is really interesting. There isn't a lot of artistry that went into this game, which is subtle and not necessarily noticed. His, I mean, I say subtle. His name is literally Pope, but um, yeah, Robert Pope being the positive force that's trying to make the city better. How often are mayoral, mayoral candidates not pol uh, career politicians or lawyers or anything like that, but an architect? What does an architect say thematically? Progress, improvement, building rather than destroying. Kate? What are you doing here? What happened? Did you? No! You don't recognize him? Should I? It's Robert. Robert Pope? Friend of Dad's? Shit, that Pope. He called me. We hadn't talked much since I joined up. He had a break-in last week. He's still a campaigner. Don't you read the news? It's not news anymore. It's advertising. He was running for mayor. So the break-in must have really spooked him then. That's what I thought, but it was odd. He told me about the break-in, asked me to come, then asked after you. Really? I haven't seen him for at least 10 years. Anyway, he was alive when I got here. Just sitting at his desk, writing. Everything went black. When I came to, he'd been shot. And I'm pretty sure it's with my gun. There was a book on the desk, a diary. It was gone. I'm sure there was someone else in the building. 
Left my radio in the car. Haven't had time to phone it in. Come on. Come with me. I'll take you somewhere safe. This isn't the time to run. I'm not like you. Running will just make me look guilty. You think this was an accident, Kate? There are no accidents in this city. Someone wanted him dead and wanted you to take the fall. Help me, Effie, please. You've got contacts. There's got to be more to this. Something he knew. Something he wanted to tell me. I can't get involved in this, Kate. You know what I do. I just great. can't. Blue's incoming, Faith. You might want to be outgoing right about... Oh, now. I'll see what I can do. If this goes down badly, find Lieutenant Miller, my superior. Take anything you find to him. I'm serious, Faith. Remember, they're not playing nice. Get out of there. Now go! And Faith... Thank you. Shit! Get out of that building, Faith. First person cutscenes um, are quite excellently animated, I think. By the way, notice the architectural models I was talking about last week. A couple more of them over here to pull it. Not pull it. Uh, further. But, um, so, yeah, these first person cutscenes, I think they're actually really nicely animated. And the fact that whenever you're in the game world, you are always in first person and always animated in the same way. Your motion animations as you run around are very much the same kind of... They have the same character as the first-person animations in the first-person cutscenes, and I really appreciate that. It helps maintain the sense of embodiment as you move through this world. Got a lot of doors for an architectural office, though. It actually reminds me of my dad's architectural office that I spent a fair bit of time in when I was very young. And a teenager, I guess. Hidden secret backstory lore for me, self critical automaton unlocked. Congratulations, everybody. This game does have a weird dissonant inconsistency about the way it feels about police forces, though. For a game that is so very um, anti-establishment, and I have some stuff to say about that a bit later on, it's uh, kind of strange because we'll find out this later, but part of the villain's plan is that he wants to replace, or at least supplement, the city police with a uh, private army, essentially, a, uh, a private military corporation's um, supplementary troops. And, um, like, you know, this is a bad thing. The police are generally positioned as a bad thing. However, for a game that has such a, um, you know, pro-protest, anti-establishment uh, game, a game that is somehow, for a mainstream game, a commentary on the problems of fascism and governmental control and police brutality, it never really comments on the fact that it's strange. Uh, or excessive that the police go guns blazing at the drop of a hat. And while that's a more modern, while that's a common concept in the modern day, this game came out in 2009. Like the fact that the police would even be willing, like sure they'd be willing to shoot one random criminal. Like I'm not denying that, but they happily machine gunned a uh, notable and beloved public office candidates, like fancy rich people office building? Um, that itself is weird. Also, the elevators in this game are all hidden loading screens, which is a nice touch. Yeah, you can breathe out. Damn, what a mess. Can't believe Pope's gone. Shit, man, this damn city. So you know him, huh? Well, you sure opened a can of worms on this one. Take the bridge across the avenue. We have a story here at City Eye Channel News. Note the image here. So this is, uh, well, basically, note the offset City Eye logo. I can't hang around here because the police actually will come and chase you out of that door if you spend too long here. But um, that and also this image. Remember this image. Remember that image. So there is a lot of really, really solid design in this game with regards to how you imply direction. The player instinctively knows. Squad cars moving in on you. You ain't got much time which way to turn uh, when going around corners in these tight interior spaces. 
half the time that's because you can see that it's uh, an L-shaped turn. However, there's lots of T-junctions. And in those T-junctions, the way they represent the way that you turn is through these really subtle little details. There's no indication whether you should turn left or right, so the rug with the large logo that draws the eye is slightly offset to the right, therefore you instinctively turn right. It's the same with the immediately following turn, um, where a screen on the wall is split by the corridor, which indicates to you that that's the way you need to turn, rather than the other way. There's also a chair in the way. But the, uh, these kind of clever little details just indicate where you need to go. It's building on a lot of what Valve did uh, a few years prior with the Half-Life games. Um, they put a great deal of effort into building a foundation of a visual language that helps, that helps designers um, imply things to the player and... Oh! Okay. Manipulate certain things about the player. So what normally happens there is that if you run and jump Head up onto, the rail overpass. It's the only way through. onto the wall, you can do a wall run and then while in midair above that cop you can do a one hit midair takedown, but I messed it up. So yeah, um, it's irritating to be constantly interrupted by Merc, okay, but let's get you out of here. still, you know, it's nice to have a boss who cares. There's also some fun facts about that helicopter I'll tell you later. It's a good thing this is futuristic safety glass that disintegrates into oxygen, rather than letting you fall on a pile of knives. You okay? Come on. What is what is he here for? <laughs> Merck says he's sending Krieg to help you get out, but all Krieg does is kind of wave his hand in front of your eyes. I was expecting him to give me, you know, a hand up to my feet at least. Anyway, uh, that's all from me for today. See you later. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.